Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Reykjavik, Iceland. And today what we have for you is what you should see and do when you're here in Reykjavik. Now, we're on the balcony of our hotel enjoying a beautiful view of the city, and honestly, Reykjavik is fantastic. And actually, what's cool is, it's if you're here in the summertime, the light is forever. I mean, it's 11 o'clock at night, and I still have plenty of sun. Anyway, so let's get started. What should you see and do when you are here in Reykjavik? Because with all the great flights from Boston and New York and London and all these places, a lot more people are coming here. So let's let's get started on what you should really do. Now, the first thing you should do when you're here is book a time to visit the Blue Lagoon. If there's anything that people know about Iceland, it's Bjork and the Blue Lagoon. And the Bjork, uh, it's hard to get her tickets now. She doesn't play so much. But the Blue Lagoon is a thermal bath, like hot spas, hot spots, hot pots, whatever you want to call it, that you can go to just south of Reykjavik, and you have to make reservations for it. If you don't, if you show up here in Reykjavik for a weekend and decide, you know what, let's make, let's just go to Blue Lagoon, you won't be able to get in. We've actually had to book ours three days in advance to get the times we wanted. We have it on an hourly schedule when you can go in. You can stay as long as you want, but it gives you an hourly schedule when you can come in. So go online, check their website out, which is in the description below, and go there, and then you can sit and enjoy the thermal spas. And honestly, when you go into those, you feel like a new person when you come out. If you rub the mud on you or have the massage or whatever, whatever you want to do, you're going to come out of there feeling great. And that's the first thing you really need to do when you come here. Now, the second thing you should do when you come to Reykjavik is go and rent a car or get a tour of the Golden Circle. When you do the Golden Circle, you're going to go head out. It takes like an hour and a half to get out there. But the whole thing is like, you know, full day, half day kind of thing, depending on how long you want to stay. But you go out and you go through a national park, which is really cool. You can see where the, the Eurasian continental plate and the North American continental plate are separating. It is pretty cool when you do see it. You can go to that in the national park. But the cool things that I like to do is you go to the geyser. Okay, geyser, you know, the word geyser with the water shooting up actually comes from Iceland. And the geyser is actually here in the Golden Circle. Now, geyser, you won't see exploding so much when you're here, but still could another um, geyser right by it blows up every five or six minutes. So you will get to see some boom explosions when you're there. If you got kids, they love getting sprayed with that stuff. The moms, they're not so happy with their kids smelling like wet sulfur, but it is still pretty cool. Also on that Golden Circle tour, when you do do that, you're going to end up at Gullfoss or this big waterfall, one of the biggest in the country at the very end. And it is spectacular to see and go walk around and walk through. So you want to do that. So that's the second thing you want to do is do the Golden Circle tour. Now, the third thing you want to do when you're here is go to the Hallgrims here or the Hallgrims Church. This is kind of the symbol of the city. And actually, if you look up behind me, you see a little spire coming up there. You can actually go to the church. It is very stark inside. I mean, it's, it's a Protestant church. So there's not much inside, but you can take an elevator to a top. It's about 70, 75 meters up there and have an excellent view of the city. But when you go there, this is one of the symbols of the city. You walk up there and you're like, hey, I accomplished it. In front of it, there's a statue of Leif Erikson, you know, and, and go into the Americas and all these kind of things. And it is kind of a cool thing to check out when you are here. And it is one of the symbols of the city. Now, the fourth thing you want to do when you come here is wander the the old town. I mean, I'll be honest with you. When you come to Reykjavik, I mean, it's only 200,000 people, but when you're here, you really get a chance to kind of integrate into the city because there's all these cool buildings and old buildings still here. And you really feel like, wow, I'm, I'm seeing some of the old Reykjavik and old Iceland and these kind of things. And it is really cool. And when you walk around the old town, going to the cafes, having your ice cream, eating your Icelandic food, the lamb is fantastic. All kinds of fish are great. I can't bring myself to eat puffin and whale though. I'm sorry, I can't do that. But there's all kinds of fantastic food here. And of course, you're gonna have skier when you're here, this yogurt that's here. But wandering the old town, you really get a cool feel of all the tourists, the buildings and stuff like that. And in Reykjavik, it's one of the things you gotta do. They've got lots of statues around here, cool buildings, all kinds of great stuff. 
so number five and six of things that you should do when you come here, I'm gonna put a lot of museums together and I'm gonna kind of group them into two parts. One are the history kind of museums and the other part is the art kind of museums. Now, if you look at the history, I mean, this is Iceland. You can, I mean, there's only been people here for 1200 years. And what's cool is that they have museums that literally track from the beginning of Icelandic settlement. You go to the, the settlement center or basically they call it Reykjavik 871 plus or minus two. Basically what you have is an old long house with the fire inside and stuff like that that they found here in downtown Reykjavik. Literally, it's a block from my apartment here. You go there, they have a fantastic museum that talks about the life of the people here in Reykjavik 1,200 years ago to see what they were doing, how things worked, how they ate, how they fished, how they lived. And it is really cool. You want more stuff? You got the Icelandic sagas. There's the Saga Museum. You can go to the National Museum here and see the history of Iceland. And they have a really great and really fantastic collection of artifacts and stories of how Iceland was kind of built up. Now, the other part of that is we look at the art side of thing. You have the National Gallery you can go to, the, the Art Center here, the Reykjavik Museum of Art. I mean, there's a lot of artistic stuff here in Reykjavik. There's a photography museum here as well. And there's a really great kind of eclectic mix of artistic community and museums here that tourists can enjoy, which is really cool when you think about it. This is a city of like 200,000 people and they have so many great museums for history and for art. You have a really great time to go see it all. Now, the seventh thing you should do when you come here is head to the old harbor and walk along the waterfront. Yes, you'll see the the, the statue of kind of like a bones of a, a of a of an old Viking vessel, but you go on there, you see the Harpa, which is the the new opera house here that's really cool to check out. Like all Scandinavian Nordic cities, they all have to have the new modern our, you know opera house on the on the waterfront it's cool to see but the old harbor is neat to go to because when you go there you feel like wow I've, I've kind of stepped back in time but also that's where you go to go take your tours of going to see the whales and these kind of things and it's really kind of a nice thing to do when you are here now the ninth thing we have on there is kind of like a silly museum that's here there also is a phallic museum or a male PP museum here in Reykjavik and most of it is actually sperm whale um, junk and you can see hamster junk so you can feel like I am not much of a man or hey there you go I feel better about myself they do have it all there and actually what's funny is we actually went there with our kids and it is very scientific it's not like embarrassing comparing kind of stuff but it is kind of a cool thing to do now the ninth thing you should do when you here is go to the Yukro Salon. Yeah, don't worry. I can't say it, you can't say it. You're not gonna say anything in Icelandic, but they all speak English here, so you'll be fine. But what I'd say is if you get a chance, excuse me, if you get a chance and you have the time, go to where the icebergs break off the glaciers in the south of Iceland. There are day trips out there. You won't be able to get to the Westman Islands, but you'll go through and see some really cool waterfalls. And then you go to this place where the where the glacier comes down and it breaks off into icebergs in this lagoon and it is just unbelievably beautiful. I mean, honestly, it's where I film my, the, my 10 things that'll shock you about Iceland because it is so gorgeous there. And you can do that from here. Now, the thing is, when you're doing day trips like this, it's going to take the whole day. So it limits the things you can do. So if you're only going to be here for 48 hours, you're going to have one day in Reykjavik, and then you got to choose. Are you going to do the Blue Lagoon? Are you going to do the, 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 the Golden Circle? Are you going to go see the icebergs? You have to make a choice between those, and it is really tough. And since the icebergs are so much farther down, that's why I have it down here at number nine on the list. In terms of my things, what to see and do here in Iceland, it's actually the number one thing for me because it was beautiful and amazing. You really see Earth's power and you feel like, wow, I'm part of something here. But if you're here in Reykjavik, it can take a lot of time to get there. So that will take the whole day, but it is well worth it. And then we look at the 10th thing you want to do when you come to Reykjavik. And that is you want to go out to the cafes and restaurants and experience Reykjavik and Icelandic culture. One of the things is when you come to Reykjavik, it's a capital. It's like going to New York. It's not really Iceland, Iceland. You got to get out and explore Iceland and see more places to really get a good feel of it. But Reykjavik gives you some of those things. So go to the cafes, go to the restaurants and eat some of the local cuisine. Yes, you're going to have lamb and you're going to have Arctic char and trout 
trout and salmon, these kind of fantastic things. Also, you want to eat skier. It's a local yogurt that's here and it is fantastic. It comes in many forms. You might have like a skier cake or a skier yogurt or skier drinking yogurt. It is awesome. You have to eat it when you're here and that's what's really cool. Also, with the things you want to eat, look, they do have some things that I don't agree with, but it's their culture, so I'm not going to say anything about it. You can have a whale when you are here. Also, you could eat puffin when you're here, and I preferred petting the puffins on the Westman Islands than eating them, but that is an option, some of those things you can do here. Also, if you're looking for side trips, because I know a lot of people come here to Reykjavik, and they have like a 48-hour or a four-day maybe kind of vacation here, you have the Snathos Yoko Peninsula, which is kind of north of Reykjavik. You can go up there, you can see the glaciers, you can go and hike and see the, the shipwrecks and the, the crazy volcanic rock formations and stuff like that. And you can eat another one of the really disgusting things here, the shark. Yes, they have fermented shark here. Basically, it's shark that's fermented for six months, so basically biodegraded nasty shark. You can have a little bite of it when you're there. All kinds of stuff. Now, if you, these are some of the things that I recommend when you do when you are here in Reykjavik. There is so much to do, and Iceland is much more than Reykjavik. When we flew in, we saw so many people that were only taking that 48-hour layover to see Reykjavik and then get out, of, get out of here, they head to Europe. If you get a chance to stay, Iceland is fantastic. We spent two weeks driving around the whole country. Reykjavik is very cool, but believe me, when you go see the icebergs in the southern part of the country, which you can do a tour from here from, or you go to the west fjords or the east fjords and see the, the like wild, majestic beauty of there, it is fantastic. And the thing is, Iceland is so small, 320, 330,000 people, you can really see a lot of the country just being based here and taking tours. Now, obviously, you can't do everything on a weekend trip, but pick and see what you want to do when you go, because honestly, this is a fantastic place to be. Now, if you want to do other things here in Iceland, we actually have videos. Five things you'll love and hate about visiting Iceland. Ten things that will shock you about visiting Iceland. Um, advice on driving in Iceland, which honestly, if you're going to come here, you got to drive. You really need to watch that before you come to give you a lot more background of what you need to know and do when you're here. Maybe you want to know what else you should eat in Iceland. We have that as well. It's all on our web website at waltersworld.com. Also here on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash waltersworld. Also, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Tweet us some pictures. Facebook us some questions. We always like helping our, our fans out. And honestly, we actually came to Iceland because our fans requested it. They said, Mark, go to Iceland. We want to know what's there. And I got to say, thank you to our fans because this has been one of the most fantastic trips with my family when we were here. Most of the times we take trips. This really felt like a vacation while we were filming and enjoying this fantastic country. Anyway, I'll say bless, bless, or bye-bye, as they say in Iceland. Don't worry, you don't have to learn too much Icelandic because they all speak English here. It's crazy. Anyway, have a great time and best bless from Reykjavik. Bye.